to be a top contender. YouTube channel and I just want to start this video with uh, a little disclaimer it's gonna be a little bit different than most of the videos it's not really exciting or fun we're not even really building anything but I've had a ton of people ask how I did a Terminator X on a Chrysler Magnum motor and I've been answering emails and messages and posts but I figured it's just easier I'll just make a video I'll walk you through all the part numbers everything I did kind of the little pitfalls I ran into and then on top of that too, we'll talk a little bit about the motor and everything that's done to it. All right, let's start with the very basics. And the very basics are, this is a 1995 Magnum 5.9 out of a Ram 2500. It's actually the second motor that's been in here. We kind of killed the first one, I think when the head gaskets went, but we'll find out, we'll tear that one down in another video. But as you can see, it is stock. So it has the stock intake on it. I did open it up and cut the runners down a little bit and I resealed the plenum. It's a stock plenum. I just added washers and used some uh, case sealant for a Yamaha actually. And that's been holding up good to boost. I've got a stock throttle body on here. You can see there is a little throttle body spacer in there. The only reason that's in there is so this alignment works out better. The throttle body spacer isn't really doing anything. It came on one of the parts trucks, so we used it. And then as you can see, we've got some custom headers we made, custom Y-pipe that goes up over into the turbo, which is an eBay GT45. Um, so that's kind of the, the hardware of what we're working with. So this is the brains of the whole system. This is the Terminator X ECU mounted underneath the dash of the truck. You might wonder why. I have two of them, and there's one there in a plastic bag, and there's one here in my hand. Well, I will give you this tip. It is not waterproof. The directions make it sound like it's water resistant and I had this mounted flat in here and what I didn't know was the windshield leaked and I ended up frying this ECU right here and having to replace it. Holly recommends to mount it vertically with the connectors coming out the bottom, which is what how I have it now. That is not how I had it before and then just in case I put a plastic bag over it because I didn't want to lose it. So this is just the Holly Universal Terminator X kit with the universal harness and I'll put the part number on the screen and I'll put it in the description just in case. So there's nothing special there. That's just the straight up Terminator X universal kit. And it does come with the little screen, which you can see is mounted over there for controls and gauges. So that Holly Universal Terminator X harness, it comes with your injector harness, which plugs right in, which for the record, these are 36 pound Excel injectors. Uh, same connectors as a stock Magnum. So this will plug right in. And then the stock harness here, I did have to modify the throttle position sensor. I had to cut the plug off the donor truck and wire it onto the Holly harness. The idle air control is the, so that's the factory TPS. The idle air control is the factory idle air control off the engine that plugs right in. It is, uh, it's already uh, a Holly style and in the directions, Holly will tell you how to pin it out if you're not quite sure to verify, but this one, it's off a of 95, plugged right in. Um, as you can see, the map sensor here, I am not using, and I didn't even attempt to use it because of the turbo. I wanted to put, I don't remember if I put a two and a half or three bar map sensor on, but I am not using that. Now for sensors, I did switch over to all Holly style. So the intake air temp sensor is down here, like where it would be on a stock one, but it is a Holly one. Uh, down behind the alternator is where I have the coolant temp sensor. It's again, a Holly style. Uh, and then over here, like here's my fuel pressure sensor. So these are all low dollar motorsport sensors. Uh, supposedly they're the same as a Holly, just with a different name. Uh, all my sensors are from there and they've all been working great. No issues. They plug right into the Holly stuff. Um, I did have to change down here. This is, it's kind of hard to see. Let me see if I can get a light on that. So that's my map sensor down there. And I, it's just teed into the side of the intake. The nice thing is these intakes have a ton of, of uh, places for vacuum or or anything else you might need. So I think I did have to change the connector on that over to the Holly style, but it's not hard. If you order them from low dollar, they give you all the, they give you all the wiring and everything. 
So that's the injectors. And then for ignition, what I have back here, again, this is kind of hard to see because everything's kind of crammed in this truck. It just looks like a big kind of dead distributor, which is what it is. It's the Holly dual sync distributor. And then because I'm not running there, I'm not running it as a distributor. I just have this blank cap on it, which kind of covers everything up. And I'm just using that for cam and crank sensors because I wanted to run the GM truck LS coils. Because if you run the distributor, you have to run, Holly recommends that you run their ignition box and their coil, and that starts to add up pretty quick. I was able to pick up all eight of these GM truck coils off eBay, plus this little sub harness right here. You need to make sure you get this harness that goes to this big connector right here, because nobody else has that. But I was able to get all eight, all eight coils with both harnesses on both sides for I think 70 bucks off eBay. It's a far, far cheaper setup than running an ignition box. And this way you get nice, you know, you can put these coils anywhere. I put them down on the valve cover so I have real short wires. I don't have to really worry about burning anything. And it gives you full control over timing. You know, if the LS guys can run these things to 900, 1000 horse, there's no reason us Magnum guys can't do the exact same thing. But if you're going to run these harnesses, like I said, this here, connects into another harness, which I know it's kind of a mess under here. There's a ton of wiring. I should clean it up, but it works as it is. There's a sub harness, there's this base harness, and then there's a harness in between that doesn't come with the Holly Terminator X kit. So this connector on the back side, you need to order that harness. And that is a universal coil near plug harness. And it's not, so it comes unterminated because you have to put it into the Terminator X ECU, you know, the harnesses, the harness you that comes with it already has those connectors. So you have to pin them into the connector. It's not hard. Holly gives you the exact directions to go through. You just cut them, crimp on new connectors, or you could leave them long. I cut them down and you just put them right in the connector where they say to, and it all plugs right in. As long as you have these short little sub harnesses with your coils, and then you have full ignition. When you drop the distributor in, I will say that, you can't put it put number one where it is normally. And when you read the directions, you'll kind of understand what I mean. Because Holly wants you to drop the distributor in, and then you have to cycle it 40 degrees or 50 degrees or something. And what will happen is that distributor will actually hit the back of the intake, and you won't be able to get the rotation. So if you pick it up and you point the rotor, because you have the rotor on it at that point, you point the rotor, I don't know, like 90 degrees or something, I don't remember what it was. You just rotate it, and basically if it was a distributor, you're moving where number one would be. So you'd have to move your wire, but the Holly doesn't care because there's no cap. So you can just rotate it, drop it in. You can get your sweep because it, it senses when you sweep because that's cam and crank and it, it'll work great. So that was one little thing I had found there. So really, if you're going to run an NA motor, that's kind of all you need is the dual sync distributor. I recommend the GMLS coils. They're cheap, easy to come by. That, that base harness, and then you need that one adapter harness for the, the coil near plug. And that's really all you need. And that gives you the Terminator X has four inputs and four outputs. And we can go over a little bit what I've got running on them. So the one thing you can't see is the cooling fan that would be right here is that is on my one input or my one output. So that's all controlled by the Holly on and off. I can change it whenever I want. Another one that I have is I am running a snow performance water meth kit on here because obviously I don't have an intercooler. Um, I do plan on putting one on it at some point. Um, just been a little crazy and haven't had a chance to do it. So instead of running the snow performance pressure switch, which I've heard very mixed results on, I actually have it in the ECU. And the nice thing about the ECU is you can control when it comes on and off. So I have it coming on at four PSI and I have it shutting off at three and a half PSI. So if it's running like 3.8 to 3.9 to four, it doesn't sit there and just come on and off. It has a little bit of room there just to stay on. So that's another one of my outputs is the water meth kit. And then another output is this little guy right down here. And this is the Holly boost controller. So what I have is I have a dual port wastegate right here, lower and upper. So what I have the, the, what the boost controller does is it actually adds boost pressure to the top of the wastegate to keep the wastegate closed. And with that, I can just go in and I can change that pressure, they call it dome pressure, and it'll just control everything. And the nice thing about running the Holly or running an electronic boost controller is, especially with the Holly, 
you can set boost cuts. I have it set to, I don't even remember what the pressure is. Once it hits a certain pressure, it'll revert to wastegate. So it'll take all that pressure off the top of the wastegate and just let the wastegate function normally. The other safeties that Holly has is you can set an ignition cut. So if it spikes the ignition really, really high, then it'll just cut all the ignition out and save the motor. So I, I really recommend if you're going to run boost to run an electronic boost controller. You can do it manually, but the ECU can really save your butt if something goes wrong. And I had that happen. I had this thing fail and it basically just stuck shut and it made 16 pounds and the ECU shut it down immediately. I was a little worried because I didn't know what happened when I looked at the data log, which is another thing the Holly can do. It just... You know, I saw the boost cut come in because it got too high. So that's that's a really, really nice feature. And then this is just another pressure sensor on top to measure the pressure on top because you tell it how much pressure you want and the Holly will actually try to target that. It'll play with the sensor as it needs to. So I think that's a pretty detailed view of kind of all the hardware that I put on here and how I made it work. Um, and I kind of just want to touch on the Holly outside of that and why I went with a Holly versus like running a factory ECU and trying to control it. And the big thing is the Holly is set up to do anything you want and it's configurable to do anything you want. And yeah, nobody, I had never, I hadn't found anybody that was running a Terminator X on a Magnum and I've never set up a Terminator X before. I did do a Holly HP on an LS motor, but that's straightforward. Everybody does it. There's a kit, you plug it in, you pick LS1 in the tune and it goes. And I was able to figure it out, and I'd never done this before, so it's very easy to use. There's a ton of support online if you do end up having problems. And a lot of the safety features I, I really like. The way you can tune a Holly is you can go in and you can set a target air fuel map. You don't have to set, you know, go in and set an individual pulse width, you know, an, an actual amount of fuel you want. You can if you want to, but you don't have to. So when we did our first burnout with this thing at Cletus and Cars in Indy, the motor had never seen more than six pounds, and that was, it was happy. It was tuned in on six pounds. The air fuels looked good. The timing looked good. But I had run the timing map out further, and I would run my air fuel map out further, because down the road I want to run. I wanted to run more power. And for that, what I did was I shut all the safeties off. I shut all the boost safeties off because I didn't want something to happen where the motor would cut out in the middle of that burnout. That's not a good show. I was willing to blow a motor, but I didn't want to put on a bad show. So what happened was these were not stainless lines at the time. These were plastic push to connect lines and very, you know, we had sat there and we had idled and the engine was heat soaked. And also we didn't have this downpipe on it here on the wastegate. And we went out there and right off the hit, basically it melted this line, melted the bottom line and the gate was just making 12 pounds. So I went out there and it did like a three minute long burnout on 12 pounds of boost and the motor had never seen 12 pounds of boost. It was never tuned in there. But what the Holly did, because the O2 sensor, the wideband O2, which is something I forgot to show you, it's in the downpipe down there, comes with the kit. It, it adjusted the fuel and added fuel and pulled fuel out. So it was, you know, it was right on my target AFR. I looked at the data logs and it, it saved it. And the timing control you have with the Holly is just, it's infinite. You can scale it however you want. You can put whatever you want. You can set safeties in there that if your air intake temps get too high, you can pull timing. If your coolant temps get too high, you can pull timing. You can set it up basically to save you. And I didn't have that set up in there. And still, it just, you know, it honed in on the fuel I wanted and it ran great. And a lot of the, the safeties too are really nice. You know, if this thing, because I've turned all the safeties back on because I don't really want to blow it up on the street. But it's nice having all those safeties that if a wastegate fails or if a fuel pump fails or an injector dies or something, it has safeties to recognize there's a problem and, and feed that information back to you or just shut it down and save the motor. And I am just like touching the surface of what this thing can do. But it's been, I mean, it runs great. I've literally never tuned anything before outside of a carb. I've tuned a carb and that was it. And this thing makes damn good power and I, I really can't say enough good things about it um, I haven't really had any issues with it I had one O2 sensor die on me and that was that was about it but I want to talk about the motor a little bit too so as I said before it's a 9559 Magnum with you know I modified the intake a little bit the bottom end is bone stock this motor we've never even pulled the heads off 
Uh, we had to swap it in before we went to Rockabilly Ruckus. We had like three days to do it. And I didn't have head gaskets and I didn't want to mess with it. So they are the factory head gaskets. And what we did was we pulled the head bolts one at a time and dropped the ARP studs in. So it does have head studs on it. And it's been pushing eight pounds now. Well, it was, it was at 10 initially and it's been running eight pounds for a long time now. And it seems very happy here. But I'm not happy. I want more power. So I finally got a set of MLS Cometic gaskets. So we're going to tear this thing down, put some Cometics in. Because we had some fell pros, we tried the 1008 and the factory replacement fell pros in the last motor. And they would hold like 8 to 10 pounds, but 12 pounds was too much. We'd push them out every time. So my plan is we're going to put the MLS gaskets in, and I'm hoping to start at around 15 pounds. I want to find out what, what a stock bottom end will take. And when I say stock, I mean stock. It, we haven't touched it. We have, Like I said, we haven't had the heads up. We have not opened this thing up. So we're going to pull the heads, put those MLS gaskets in, and kind of see where the hard part is. I know a lot of guys have told me I'm going to break pistons. If I guys tell me I'm going to break pistons at 6 or 7 pounds, I've had it on 12. I ran a 3 minute long burnout on 12 pounds with blown head gaskets, and it was it was making power, and the pistons are just fine. So I want to find out where that where that limit is of the hard parts, and then we'll, we'll dial it back and put a new motor in it. But... I, I'm curious to see. I, this thing makes really good power. Um, the other thing is we put a new clutch in it. We put a, stex, a spec stage 3 plus clutch in it, which is rated for 750 foot-pounds because the center force wasn't holding anymore. It wouldn't hold third gear last time we had it out. So we're breaking the clutch in, and we're going to turn this thing up. We're going to make some big power. Yeah, so I know this is a little bit different of a video, but I know a lot of guys have been asking. If I miss something, just comment or send me a message or something, and I can easily get back to you. Um, I love helping other Chrysler guys out and figuring out how to do this. And I, I think there's a lot of potential with these motors. And I'm not the only one putting turbos on them or boosting them or even putting Holly on them. So it's pretty cool to see what's coming. And, you know, I love to help other people out because I think it just makes us all better. And 